The Great Western Railway, or GWR, was one of the big four railway companies formed in 1923, with the grouping of the various smaller railway lines. The railway linked London via an impressive station at Paddington, with Bristol via Reading and Swindon. The GWR extended into the Midlands at Wolverhampton and as far north as Chester. Wales was served by the GWR network apart from the top of North Wales. The company operated into Devon and Cornwall, home of the most westerly station in England, Penzance. The South West also has the city the GWR's most famous locomotive is named after, the city of Truro. Built in 1903 at the Great Western Railway's Swindon Works, City of Truro is a 3700 City Class 440 locomotive. She was designed by George Jackson Churchwood, who was the chief mechanical engineer of the Great Western Railway between 1902 and 1922, having rose through the ranks from draftsmen. It was with the city class that Churchwood first won success and worldwide recognition. The city of Truro was one of 20 city class locomotives built, half of which had been converted from the earlier Atbara class designed by Churchwood's predecessor, William Dean, and introduced in the year 1900. Today, City of Truro is seen on the Seven Valley Railway, most definitely in Great Western Railway territory. She's being coupled up to a rake of former LNER coaching stuff.
City of Truro holds an important place in British railway history, as she was the first locomotive to break the 100 miles per hour barrier, which is 160 kilometers per hour. Almost exactly 30 years before the London and North Eastern Railway's A1 class locomotive Flying Scotsman hit 100 miles per hour, City of Truro is said to have notched up a speed of 102.3 miles per hour as it steamed past White Ball Bank in Somerset on its way to London in 1904. This speed was recorded from the footplate by Charles Rue Martin, a writer employed by the Railway magazine. Initially, mindful of the need to maintain their reputation for safety, the GWR allowed only the overall timings for the run to be put into print. However, as the trip did not have a dynamometer car attached, which was the accepted way of authenticating speeds, or a second timekeeper, the official record was broken on the 30th of November 1934 by Flying Scotsman.
Now preserved by the National Railway Museum, the loco has been restored to full working order at a cost of £130,000 to mark the 100th anniversary of its record-breaking run and has subsequently visited several UK heritage railways. Another of the classic Great Western Railway steam engines is this one, an example of the 2884 class. Designed by the GWR's chief mechanical engineer, Charles Collett, and built between 1939 and 1942. <laughs> Originally designed as a freight loco, 3802 is departing from Haworth with a rake of Mark I coaches. The, the most famous station on the Keithley and Worth Valley Railway is Oakworth. the unsung star of the 1970s film, The Railway Children. The station is kept in the manner it would have been during the Edwardian period, between 1905 and 1914. Oakworth is still lit by gas and heated by coal fires making it an authentic taste of yesteryear travel. <laughs> 3802 is making the return journey back to Keithley, ready for stopping at Oakworth. As there is no method of turning locomotives around at Oxenhope, the return journey to Keithley is usually done tender first.
the two double eight fours were a development of the earlier 2800 class and were designed by the GWR's chief mechanical engineer from 1922 to 1941, Charles Cullerton. They were designed for heavy freight work and 167 were built in total at the GWR's works at Swindon. The next steam locomotive of the Great Western Railway is this one, 5051 Earl Bathurst.
one of the 171 strong Castle class introduced from 1923. The castles were a 4-6-0 design and the class were named after castles. This example was originally named Dusclanning Castle in May 1936. But was renamed Earl Bathurst in August 1937. Currently, the locomotive is a static display at the Didcot Railway Centre. Back to the Seven Valley Railway and arriving at Kidderminster Station to couple to her train is double five four two a member of the 4575 class of steam locomotive. The 4575 class were a 262T small prairie type locomotive. The T designating a tank engine, where the loco's water is stored in tanks at the side of the boiler instead of behind in a tender. The class were based on the 1500 class, but with larger side tanks. Here, double 542 is coupled up to a rake of British Railways Mark I coaching stock in the traditional marine and cream livery. Exactly 100 locomotives were built in the class. Between 1927 in 1929 at the Great Western Railway's Swindon Works and were numbered 4575 to 4599 and double 500 to double 574. Moving to the middle of the North Yorkshire Moors and we're waiting along with several others 
to see the double heading sight of two smaller GWR steam locomotives speeding by. At Gothland Station, two more are arriving backwards running. The first is 5224, a member of the 5205 class. The 5205 class were designed for short haul coal trips from coal mines to ports in South Wales. Back to the Severn Valley Railway at Kidderminster and arriving is 5526, another member of the 4575 class and currently based at the South Devon Railway. <laughs> Double 526 was introduced in traffic on the 31st of May 1928 and was built at Swindon Works. She's arriving with a solitary observation coach and doesn't hang around to get on with the return job. Crew Works 2003 and proudly sitting in the summer sun is 7760, one of the Great Western Railway's 5700 class. She was built in 1930 and is currently based at the Tysley Locomotive Works in the West Midlands. The GWR liked the concept of the pannier tank engine which differs from the more conventional saddle tank design by not having the tanks go all the way down the sides of the locomotive. The pannier design was almost exclusively used in the UK by the Great Western Railway, although they were very popular in Belgium.
Here, 5764 is on its home turf at the Severn Valley Railway. The 5700 class were built between 1929 and 1950, becoming one of the classes which continued in production after British Railways was formed in 1948. They were designed by Charles B. Collett and a mammoth number of 863 were built in total, making them the second most produced British class of steam locomotive. 5764 herself was built in 1929 at Swindon. She was designed like the rest of her class for shunting and light freight work. The class was developed from the earlier 2021 class. 5764's last shed was 81A, the legendary Old Oak Common, which was the primary shed for the Great Western Railway's London-based locos. Now the site is a shadow of its former self, and some of the area has been scheduled for compulsory purchase for the Crossrail project, with all the remaining Great Western Railway buildings to be demolished. The 5700 class have been immortalised in the railway series of books by the Reverend W. Audrey and the subsequent television series Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, with the loco called Duck being a 5700 class loco. Duck wears the number 5741, which was an actual 5700 class loco, being built on the 31st of March 1929, and finally being cut up on the 31st of May 1958. The class were also featured in the previously mentioned film The Railway Children, which used the Keithley and Worth Valley Railway's 5775, but wearing a brown based livery of the fictitious Great Northern and Southern Railway. 5764 was eventually withdrawn from British Railways in 1960, but was purchased by the London Transport Executive along with 18 other examples. Three of these London transport engines remained in service until 1971. Five seven six four is being coupled up to 
46446, a member of the 2MT class. Designed by Ivert for the London, Midland and Scottish Railway in 1945. A total of 128 were built, including many by British Railways after nationalisation. Moving to the main line and the seafront at Dawlish with a GWR loco speeding through is as spectacular as it gets. However, this comes at a cost, as Brunel's desire to have his railway near the sea makes it one of the most expensive lines in the UK to maintain, due to the continual battle with sea erosion. Arriving at Plymouth with the Royal Duchy Special is the next great Western Railway steam locomotive, 5029 Nunnery Castle, another of the 4073 Castle class.
just up the rails to Liscard and the road bridge gives us a great view of the coming action. A modern first great western high speed train arrives and departs as we see the familiar smoke on the horizon. Five oh two nine is on great form on the return trip. Steaming forward is an example of the 7800 class, better known as the Manor class. The 7802 is named Bradley Manor and entered service in January 1938. She had an operational life of 27 years before being withdrawn in November 1965. By which time all 74 of these had replaced them. The Class 52 Westerns. Unusually, these were diesel hydraulic locomotives Diesel hydraulics were common in Germany, as they supposedly resulted in a lighter locomotive than the equivalent diesel electric version.
these westerns dominated the main line of the western region until the last example was withdrawn in 1979 to make way for what became the fastest diesel locomotive in the world. First delivered in 1976, the Class 43s revolutionised rail travel. Not just in the Great Western Railway's former area, but around the country. The Class 43s were branded by British Rail as Intercity 125 and the class took the world record for the fastest diesel-powered train when it was recorded at an absolute maximum speed of 148 miles per hour that's 238 kilometers per hour during 1987 ironically on a stretch of the former London and North Eastern Railways patch on the East Coast Main Line these HSTs have proved to be worthy successors of the Great Western Railways fabulous steam locomotives.